Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So we're going to be doing more miniatures, we're doing uh, more Mansions of Madness, and this time we're looking at a couple of the star spawns. These are the big, scary monsters that can show up in the game. So I figured we would go ahead and just try to knock these guys out together at the same time. So what I did was I did a uh, base layer of white, which I'm sure you are uh, noticing at this point. Uh, and after that, I think that I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, uh, we're gonna keep doing our thing where we're just using shade. We're gonna use that Agrax Earth shade, because if you still got that lying around, you might as well keep using it. Alright, now, I'm imagining that these are going to be very, very green star spawns. So I'm gonna start with, uh, this grass green color. It's kind of a dark green color. It's not super dark, but it is pretty dark. And we're going to need a lot of paint here. So I'm going to squeeze out quite a bit of paint onto my little plastic surface right here. My nozzle's all stopped up, which doesn't surprise me because I haven't used this color in a while. Let's see if what I did there uh, un unclogged it. Oh yeah, much nicer. Much, much, much nicer. And yeah, like I said, you're going to need a lot, so don't be afraid to get out a, a pretty big splotch there. Um, maybe don't go too crazy just because you can always get some more, but yeah. And I'm, I'm not even using any, like, miniature brand of brush here. This is just a really, really big brush. I figured that we would use this for the base coat. Oh, man. And now that I'm looking at it, this, this green color is not quite as dark as I was kind of hoping. Hmm. Let's see if we can do something about that. Tell you what, let's use all of the green that we've already got out. I don't think it'll be too big of a deal. Why don't we go ahead and coat the arms and the face before we get any crazier. And actually, now that I think about it, I think that this will be a decent shade. So we'll just go ahead and stick with this. Yeah, we'll just uh, go over all of the star spawns with this grass green color. Alright, now the thing about these miniatures is that don't be concerned about the details or anything like that, because uh, these are very, very large miniatures. Uh, all you really want to concern yourself with um, is just kind of going through it in a time-efficient manner. Because they've got so much surface area, they've just got, you know, they just take some time to really get all the paint in there. So, just use a large brush like this. Just go at it. Don't concern yourself with the details. Just have some fun. And we're gonna we're just gonna use some dry brushing techniques to bring out those details. And then we'll use a shade to give the whole thing even more depth. And I think that that would do just fine. Even with regard to the base here, I'm probably gonna get a little bit of green on the base, but that's okay because I'm gonna go over the base with black later on, just because I like you know, I like black for all of my bases, which you probably know if you've seen uh, seen my channel before and you've seen my other videos. Let's see what happens if we decide to go a little bit crazy. Let's just kind of dip the tip of our brush here into some water, and that'll water down our paint quite a bit. Let's see what that does. Might have gotten a little bit too much water on there, but that's okay. All right, and we are already out of paint. <laughs> that didn't take long. One thing that I would say, uh, will say, is that if you are doing these star spawns like this, um, and you've got a decent primer on there, I don't think it really matters what brand of paint you get. So, like, paint for miniatures is kind of expensive, you know, it's, depending on where you get it from, maybe three or four, four dollars, three or four dollars a bottle. And you can just get, you know, like a one dollar bottle of craft paint from, you know, the craft store or from, you know, a retail store or something like that for, for pretty cheap. And honestly, I think that that would be fine. Now, you don't want to use those for regular old miniatures just because that tends to, uh, uh, get wiped off pretty easily and that's something you want to avoid. But if you've got a good primer, and you've got a really big miniature like this, and especially if you're gonna do uh, dry brushing like we're gonna do later on, and you're gonna do a varnish, which we'll probably do later on, I don't think it really matters what kind of paint you use. I'm just kind of using this because I've got plenty of it and there's no reason for me not to.
oh man, so much paint these guys take up. And I'm, <laughs> I'm still working on just one guy, <laughs> one star spawn. Oh man. All right, now you may have noticed that I'm actually not doing the tentacles, uh, kind of coming off of his mouth there. I figured we would try to do kind of a fleshy, purpley pink color for those. I thought that that would be a nice kind of uh, contrast to the green and not just have it look so, you know, uh, one color all around. You know what I mean. Okay. And I think that that's pretty much good enough. I mean, it's um, in a few little spaces, a few little spots, at some goofy angles and all that. But I think that overall, that's kind of the big picture. And I feel like that will be perfectly sufficient. Okay, so let's move on to the other one. <laughs> let's do it all over again. to get to the backs of his forearms here just because you know the way he's crouched over like this it's kind of hard to reach back there with a brush but I think we're we're doing the best we can I think it'll be all right Okay, I think we finally got a nice semi-even set of coats on each of the star spawns there of that grass green color. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush off. And next up, I'm just gonna use that same brush, but I'm gonna move on to this imperial purple color. This is a nice dark purple color. Like I said, we kind of want a little bit of a sort of purpley flesh tone for those tentacles, and I feel like this is going to be a good base color for that. So we're going to use Imperial Purple, and we're just going to use the same brush. Now, here's where you start want to start being careful, because we don't want to just have, you know, we want to try to blend the colors a little bit. We, try, we want to try to blend the purple into the green a little bit. So start with the tips of the tentacles like this, and just kind of like work your way down, going back and forth like this, see about trying to blend upward. You don't want to just have the the color abruptly change from purple to green. You kind of want a little bit of a blend. There we go. That's not too bad. I feel like I could have done a little bit of a better job there blending the purple into the green, but it's not just a clear line that's that you know separates them, which is what we were going for. Okay, so now let's try to do the other guy here. Okay, and that will about work for that, so we'll just leave those the way that they are. Rinse my brush off again. All right, and next up, while that purple is still drying, and since this green that we used is mostly dry everywhere, I don't really see any particular wet spots, let's take some pale green. This is a very, very bright green color, and we're going to use this to dry brush the entirety of the star spawns. All right, I've got a, a medium-sized dry brush right here. This is just a really, really big dry brush, basically, is all this is gonna use this to load up paint onto my brush. The reason why they call this dry brushing is because you've got a lot of paint on your brush, but you've got such a small amount that it's almost dry. You can see that my bristles there, they've got paint on there, but it's not a whole lot. Um, and the reason why is because you want to be able to go over everything that you just did. You want to get all the high contours of the miniature. You don't want to focus on the deep crevices and all that. You want to do the high points. And that's why you're using a, a lighter, brighter color like this because it's going to bring out those uh, those high points. 
Yeah, just like that. With the wings like this, I would say go ahead and run across them like this. Don't run down them like this. Go across. like this. You can see the ribs kind of jutting out of his back here. It's gross looking. <laughs> Alright, and don't worry so much about doing the interior of the wings like this because they're not very visible anyway and they're going to be shrouded in a little bit more darkness. So I would say just, uh, don't worry too much. Maybe still touch up in there, but, uh, you know, don't worry about it. There we go. So we've got some nice, nice depth on that, uh, on that star spawn right there. All right, I'm going to leave him the way that he is, and let's do the same thing with the other guy over here. I'm going to move my thingy up a little bit. Put it a little bit closer to myself here. Man, I could have done a more even color of the uh, grass green on this uh, other star spawn now that I'm looking at him, but that's okay. One thing that you can do with this dry brush as well is you can kind of blend a little bit more against that uh, that purple that you did earlier, and that will help to kind of kind of blend it a little bit more, like we were talking about. Yeah. Okay, I think that that's pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm gonna rinse that off. All right, next up, I'm going to use onto the pink part, uh, move on to the pink parts of the tentacles. So I'm gonna be using this entrail pink color, just a nice gutsy pink color. That's basically what this is. I'm not gonna need a whole lot, comparatively speaking. All right, I'm going to use a small-sized Citadel dry brush. If you, you can use the medium one still, probably, if you want to, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use the small one here. And you could also just use the small one for when you're doing the, uh, um, uh, for when you were doing the, the green like that, but I just like to use the, the medium one because it just kind of helps to knock it out a little bit faster, makes the whole process go faster. Yeah, just kind of lightly just dry brush it from the tips of the tentacles and down and just kind of apply a little bit less paint the further to the face you get, further down the tentacles you go. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'll stick with that. Let's do the same thing with the other one. Right. There we go. We got some nice purple mouths on there. Nice and disgusting. I like that. All right. There's actually very little to do left because that's the thing is that these large min uh, miniatures like this, these large monsters, it's it's basically just, you know, apply big coats evenly and, and be fine. Um, but let's do the eyes. And I think that for the eyes, I'm imagining bright yellow eyes. So I'm gonna be using this lemon yellow color. And I think I can safely get away with a medium Reaper round brush right here. There's just one gauge uh, Reaper round brush. Let's see here. All right, and I think that that's pretty much all you need to do there. Rinse those off. 
And next up, let's move on to the actual shading part of the miniature. So I'm gonna get out my handy dandy, super fancy, awesome uh, Agrax Earthshade here, this Citadel brand uh, shade here. This is Agrax Earthshade. It's got, it's, it's kind of a brownish color to it. And we'll go ahead and use this. I think I'm actually done with that. So I'll put that over there for now, at least out of the way. Whoop. okay. All right, and I'm gonna get out a large-sized shader here, and I think that this will help to uh, make the process go a lot faster. Now, these are obviously very large miniatures. You're going to use a lot of shade. Uh, don't feel bad about it. Just kind of go through it and know that, you know, they're large miniatures, so it's going to take a lot of shade. So don't be, uh, don't skimp on the shade. You don't want your, your miniature to be too flat or too bright. So make sure that you uh, use this liberally. Oh, <laughs> almost dropping him. Uh, Death Cricket, one of my uh, usual viewers was commenting on my last video. It's not a Christopher Ridge mini painting video without dropping the mini. <laughs> He's right. He is 100% right. I, I drop miniatures all the time. All the time. I'm just a klutz. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Get these slimy tentacles shaded up a little bit here. All right, so that's one nasty dark star spawn right there. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and do the other one. Right. Oh my goodness. So much shade to be used for these guys. And I think that will about do it. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to paint those bases, but I think that before I do that, I'm going to let them dry. Even then, painting the bases is something that I think I can do off camera, so I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So uh, there you go. I think that those are the star spawns from uh, Mansions of Madness. You know what? Actually, let's I feel like that wing can be a little bit darker. Yeah, let's just let's just touch this wing up a little, little tiny bit more. It looks a little bit bright. There we go. Okay. So yeah, there you go. Those are some star spawns from Mansions of Madness. Some nasty, giant Cthulhu-esque looking monsters. Um, I'm going to be doing more of Mansions of Madness. I've already done a few miniatures there. So if you want to see more of those, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and throw this video a like if you like what you saw here. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you next time on Let's Paint a Mini. We'll be doing some more mansions. So yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you again, everybody, for watching.